Welcome to ECE302. This is lecture A3 on autocorrelation function. I'm Professor Stanley Chan. So in the previous two lectures, we started to talk about random processes. What are random processes? They are random functions with a random index. And then we talk about mean functions, a very unique aspect of a random process. Today, we're going to learn about another very useful concept, which is the autocorrelation function. So I want to start by reviewing the concept of a random process. As I mentioned about two lectures ago, a random process is a function f of t indexed by a random key. I call it psi. If you have a function, let's say this is your f of t, you can actually have another function, which is f t again, but the first one I'm going to put an index of psi 1, the second one I'm going to put an index of psi 2. These two functions, you can imagine that they are drawn from a distribution where in this sample space of the distribution you have two samples or two possible events. The first event is indexed by psi1, the other event is indexed by psi2. And so what is a random process? A random process, of course, it is random. Its randomness is characterized by this random index. If you focus yourself only on a particular random index and you look at that function itself, it is a deterministic function because once you have chosen your psi to be psi1, this thing itself is a function. It's just a deterministic function like what we have been learning in random variables. If you pick a coin, you flip the coin and then you look at the face that you see, it could be either a head or the tail. If you get a head, this head becomes a deterministic number, it's an outcome. That outcome represents the random realization of the random variable. Here, this function is the random realization of the random process. If you understand this realization perspective of a random process, then you should be able to appreciate the two perspectives of the random process. The first perspective is that you can look at the statistics over time and this is what we call the temporal average, meaning that over this period of time, what is the average value, which is a number, uh, uh, which is the average of all these values on this function. And that is the temporal average you integrate over the time. The alternative is called the statistical average, where you look at things vertically. So you fix a time stamp to be t0, you go across all these possible samples of different realizations. So this is psi1, this is psi2. At psi1, for this particular function, I look at time t0, and then at psi2, I'm also looking at this time stamp t0, and then here I have a value, here I have another value, uh, these values, they represent the random realization of a random variable. This random variable is this function um, x at t0. Okay. Now, uh, what is this x? Well, I can denote uh, this x as here. So this is a random process x of t with a random index psi. And then x evaluated at t0 is actually uh, this random variable. This is a random variable. 
And because it is a random variable, I can talk about is expectation. So if you say that I'm going to take the expectation of, of x at t0, I am going to uh, integrate x of t0. Of course, there is a psi here, and then you have the PDF of psi. You integrate over all the possible choices of your random index. Uh, in this particular example, where you only have two choices, uh, it's like a Bernoulli coin flip, where you have probability p of getting this function, and then you have probability 1 minus p getting the other function. And so the average, or this mean function, would just be um, the way the average of these two functions. That This is what we call the mean function. Okay, So the mean function uh, of a random process, as we defined in the previous lecture, uh, is just the integration of this random process x of t uh, with uh, integrate with this random index. Uh, clearly, uh, this t uh, has to go with this random index as well. So you're integrating with respect to this index. Now we have gone through several examples of this mean function, and we have seen the difference between the statistical average as well as the temporal average. Now, if we recall the uh, the previous lectures about random variables, we know that a random variable does not only have mean, it also has um, a, a variance. So what is the corresponding definition of variance for random processes? The definition of variance for random processes uh, can be first defined through this concept called the correlation. Correlation and variance, they are related uh, with the definition that covariance of x and y uh, equals to the correlation, which is the joint expectation minus mu x minus mu y. So this is sort of defining us the variance, this is sort of defining us the, uh, the correlation. So the autocorrelation function is defined in a similar way. We are going to first look at this term here, which is the correlation between two variables. Uh, and then we are going to generalize this idea to random processes. And afterwards, we define something called the autocovariance function. The autocovariance function uh, takes the role of this covariance between two variables. So, what is the definition of an autocorrelation function? The autocorrelation function of a random process, x of t, is defined as this thing here. Now, on the left-hand side, we have this function called the Rx. It is the autocorrelation function for the random variable x. There are two arguments for this uh, autocorrelation function. Uh, you have t1 and then you have t2. These are the two time indexes that you're looking at for this random process. Now, in order to understand this t1 and t2, we need to look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side of this definition is the expectation of a product of two things. The first thing is this x evaluated at t1. The other one is x evaluated at t2. This t1 corresponds to the first argument on the left-hand side. t2 corresponds to the uh, second argument of the left-hand side. So you ask, what is the meaning of um, this definition on the right-hand side? Let's draw the picture. Let's say you have this random process, x of t. This is your random process. And this random process, of course, you have uh, multiple uh, realizations. So here I'm drawing, drawing you another possible realization, uh, a third uh, possible uh, realization. So all of these are possible realizations of the same random process. And then you're looking at time t1. So here, the horizontal axis denotes the time. And then I ask, what is time t1? Well, let's say time t1 is here. This is t1, t1, and then t1. And then I'm looking at the function x evaluated at t1. And therefore, for the first realization, I'm looking at this point. The second realization, I'm looking at this point. The third realization, I'm looking at that point. And so this is the random variable okay if you look at all these yellow dots here 
they are the realizations of a random variable. This random variable x at t is x at t1. This is a random variable. So you're looking at this random variable. And then you can also repeat the same calculation for t2. And let's say here is your t2, t2, and t2. For each of the random realizations, I can pick a point. These are the points on that particular random realization. And then I look at all these points. Uh, then I have x at t2. These are the realizations of a random variable. The random variable is x at t2. Okay, so now you have two random variables, x at t1. This is, of course, a random process, but now since you're looking at a particular time instant, this x at t1 is a random variable. x at t2 is another random variable. So you have a pair of random variables. So here is random variable 1, random variable 2. If you have a pair of random variables, you can talk about their correlation. And then the correlation is defined as expectation of variable 1 times variable 2. So what is variable 1? Variable 1 is x at t1, variable 2 is x at t2. These are the variables. And so here is the correlation of two variables. And this definition is well defined because you can always look at the correlation between two random variables. And since I am looking at this random process x at t1, which is a random variable, and then the random process at t2, which is another random variable, I can define this correlation. So you ask, what is the interpretation then? If you go to the diagram here, you can see that I am looking at the, the correlation between this timestamp and this timestamp. Now, for some random processes, you may have a lot of correlations. But for some random processes, for example, a process that only defined us locally, then time t1 may not have too much correlation with time t2. In other words, you can have functions which can have very, very long correlations. For example, a, uh, in, in a speech file, uh, you're looking at uh, you're looking at a, a slow uh, a speech. Then this correlation can go very very far away because uh, at time t one you may have a strong correlation at time t two. Versus if you look at a, a musical instrument, for example, uh, certain musical instruments that the 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 uh, the musical piece that you're playing changes rapidly, then the correlation may be may be very very short. Where the the, the um, your, at time t one your correlation with the samples at time t two may not be that strong. So the correlation tells you something about how much correlation you have at certain starting time index t one compared to the end uh, timestamp t two, and therefore when you look at the definition here. Uh, the random the autocorrelation function is a function of a t1 and t2. You need to specify when do you want to start and when do you want to stop. And therefore you're looking at these two particular time instants. If you change the t1, let's say to here, and then you change your t2 to there, uh, then you're looking at the correlation at this compared to that. Okay? Um, so the autocorrelation function has to be a function of indexes t1 and t2, and as such, it is a two-dimensional function. This is somewhat different than a, a variance uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the random variable case, where you always get a number, or you calculate covariance, you always get a number. Uh, here, uh, this is a, a two-dimensional function, where you, you tell me the index is t1 and t2, I will return you a value representing the correlation between these two timestamps. 
And therefore, if you change T1 and T2, this autocorrelation function, the value, will also change. Okay, so this is a very abstract definition of the autocorrelation function. What I want to do is to show you a few examples, and then I want to draw you some pictures to explain this abstract concept further. Let's look at this first example. This is a very simple example where you have a random process, x of t, defined to be a random variable a times a cosine modulation, cosine of 2 pi t. And then this a is, di is distributed according to a uniform distribution in 0 and 1. I want to find the autocorrelation function. Now, this problem shouldn't be a, 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 a such a big surprise to you because we know how to calculate the, the mean function. The mean function, of course, as we have said last time, uh, what you're doing is that you draw all the possible realizations of this uh, x of t. Uh, since they're cosine, I can have a cosine function like this. And if I draw a different a, I may have a different uh, realizations. For example, this. This could be a realization, and then this can be another realization. So I can have all these possible realizations. And then the mean function will just be uh, the mean of all these possible functions. Okay, uh, And so this is the, the red thing is called the expectation of x of t. This is the mean function. Um, now, I want to look at the autocorrelation function. And since autocorrelation function is defined by these two indexes, I need to pick the two indexes, t1 and t2. So um, let's say I pick this t1 to be here. Now this is totally arbitrary. I can pick another pair of t1 and t2. I can evaluate something. So let's say I'm looking at t1 and t2. I'm looking at the correlation between uh, a random variable here and a random variable there. So I'm looking at these two random variables. Okay. Now, uh, so when you look at these two, this is a random variable x at t1. This is another random variable at t2. Uh, if you talk about the autocorrelation function, you're looking at rx of t1 at t2, which is the defined as the expectation of x t1, uh, x at t2. This is the definition of the autocorrelation function. And since each of them is a random variable, a random variable here, I can talk about their joint expectation. So without going further into this uh, uh, pictorial argument, we can actually follow the equations. And then we can come back to this pictorial argument further. So let's just plug in the definition of x at t1 and x at t2. Well, x at t1 is just this a times cosine 2 pi at t1. Uh, x at t2 is just a times cosine uh, 2 pi at t2. Uh, and so now you look at this expectation. The expectation, of course, is taken with respect to a. Uh, and so this cosine 2 pi t1 and cosine 2 pi t2 has nothing to do with your expectation. So you can pull them out. And as such, you will have expectation of a square. Now, what is the expectation of a square? Well, since your random variable a is distributed according to a uniform distribution in 0 and 1, you know the mean, you know the variance. The mean is uh, expectation of a uh, is 1 half. And then you also know the variance of a uh, is 1 over 12. This is the mean and variance of a uniform random variable. And then we ask, what is the second moment? Well, the second moment uh, is just the, the variance uh, plus the, uh, the expectation uh, square. Well, because the variance is the second moment minus the mean square, and therefore we, the second moment is the variance plus the mean square. So you put these two numbers in, so you have 1 over 12 plus uh, 1 over 2, uh, uh, take the square, so you have 1 over 4, and then you add the things up, you get 1 over 3. Okay, so here you have this uh, uh, value of 1 over 3, which is the second moment of the random variable A. 
and the rest is just constant with respect to your random variable. So what do you have? Well, you, you show that the autocorrelation function is given by one third of cosine uh, 2 pi t1 times cosine 2 pi t2. Uh, so what is it? Well, you go back to the diagram again. It says that you tell me this uh, time t1 and give me any time t1, give me another time t2, the correlation between this random variable and then the other random variable, uh, it will have the correlation function that changes with the t1 and t2. So, so you, you, you fix a t1, you fix a t2, I will get a, a correlation. And the correlation takes certain value and it will change over the time. Now, why is it in this cosine form? Well, because this function, this random process itself, is a periodic function. And so, if I am looking at this function here, and then I am looking at the function here, um, uh, then I, these two, they are exactly one period apart, uh, two pi apart, and so I will have the exact correlation. I will have the maximum correlation between these two. Versus if I'm looking at uh, the time index here, this is my t1, and let's say this is my t2, uh, then I have uh, the opposite correlation because whenever I change uh, in the negative side, uh, t2 will change in the positive side. So I will have a negative correlation, and this is reflected in this cosine function. Okay, so the autocorrelation function, let me remind you again, it has to be a two dimensional function. You need to tell me the time t1 and time t2 how they change over time. And of course, this T1 and T2 in this diagram, they are generic symbols. Uh, the T1 can be here, the T1 can be there. Uh, you, you, and, and this is a generic formula that describes the entire uh, random process. Let me show you another example. This is a uh, random phase example where I want to find the autocorrelation function are exactly t1 and t2. And so, um, again, the diagram of this problem is this. You have this cosine function, and now, because you're taking a random phase of, uh, of, uh, of phi, uh, of beta, uh, you, have this, uh, random, you have this random phase uh, problem. Okay, so you have the randomness in shifting the cosine function left and right. So now you ask, what is at t1? Well, I can randomly pick a t1, I can pick another point t2, and then I can just calculate their correlation. Uh, the correlation means that I treat this as a random variable, I treat that as a random variable, and then I see what are the, what are the correlation. So you plug in this definition here, this is, this is x at t1, this is x at t2. You plug in to this definition, and you take the expectation, now when you take the expectation, this is a little bit interesting here, because what is this? This is the expectation of cosine of omega t1, which is a deterministic quantity, and then you have a theta here. Theta is a random variable. Here you have cosine of omega t2 plus theta. So when your theta is a random variable, then how do you take the expectation? Well, we know the expectation of any function g of theta is just the integration of a g of theta, and then I will take the, the PDF of, of theta. So what is the PDF of theta? Well, PDF of theta in this case, since it's distributed from minus pi to pi uniformly, this is just 1 over 2 pi. Okay, And that means the integration limit has to be from minus pi to pi. And then what else? Well, you have this g here. What is the g? Well, the g is exactly this cosine of omega t1 plus theta cosine omega t2 plus theta. That is your g. And therefore, you go back to here, you have this integration of cosine times cosine d theta. So you have this integration to take care of. Now, this integration is not too terrible because we do have a thing called the trigonometric formula. It says that you have cosine a times cosine b. It can be written as half of cosine a plus b plus cosine of a minus b. So you treat this as a, you treat this as b. So you have a and b. And this thing becomes a plus b, and then this thing is a minus b. 
All right, so now you have taken the integration of this uh, sum of two cosine functions over d theta. And then you look at the first term. The first term has a theta, and theta has to go from minus pi to pi. And when you integrate this function, this is going to become zero. Because you're integrating the cosine function with respect to theta, and theta goes from minus pi to pi, that's one period, so you will get zero. The other one, what do you get? It doesn't have any theta, so it has to stay with this integration. So this integration was, will be applied to theta going from minus pi to pi, but since you have this 2 pi here, it will get cancelled, and therefore you will have this half times the cosine of omega t1 minus t2. And so you show that the autocorrelation function is defined as this one half of cosine omega t1 minus t2. Again, it is a function of t1 and t2. You tell me a pair of t1 and t2, I tell you what is the autocorrelation function. So how do we understand the meaning of this autocorrelation function? As I said, this correlation function is very, very similar to the notion of correlation in a pair of random variables. Where you have random variable x, random variable y, you can talk about this correlation and therefore you can talk about that correlation. This is the correlation between two time stamps of a random process. Uh, in fact, these two are just two different random variables. So you can talk about their correlation. Their correlations can be strong, especially when t1 and t2 are close to each other. Uh, but there are processes where t1 and t2, even though they are very close, they may not be correlated at all. So let me describe further into, into the pictures of how do we understand this correlation. So this is the first example again. Okay, so you have this you have this cosine function times the amplitude a. Now in this case, I'm not just following the definition. I'm not just deriving the equation. That's not the goal. We have already seen the example. What I want to do is to explain in more details about a particular example where t1 is zero and t2 is 0.5. Now this pair of numbers is chosen arbitrarily. But I want to illustrate the meaning of, of this autocorrelation function. So this is uh, a t1 equals to 0, this is a t2 equals to uh, 0.5. So we know what they are because the x of t is a cosine 2 pi t. So if t1 is 0, you are evaluating x at 0. Now if you have x at 0, you have cosine 0, so therefore this is giving you a. At x, uh, at x equals to uh, at a at t equals to uh, 0.5, you get minus a, and therefore you can talk about the correlation between these two random variables. So random variable one, random variable. This is another random variable, and so now you can talk about their correlation. So you plug in this a times a. Well, then you are taking the expectation of a squared, so you have minus uh, one third. So this is this is the way how we calculate the correlation in the old sense where we are talking about a pair of random variables and we can show that this expectation is minus one third without knowing anything about the random process at all okay so i'm just looking at a pair of random variables i can take the expectation pictorially this is very important first of all you look at this random variable x0 okay it is a random variable it is a random variable that is happening in this range of values so here you have all these orange circles these are all the possible states that this random variable x0 can take this x0 it is a random variable you cannot take negative values. That's just because for whatever a you choose, right? For whatever a you choose, you can only uh, move your a around 
uh, A is uh, uniform uh, 0 and 1. You can only move your A in the positive side, and therefore your x of 0 has to go vertically on the positive side. These orange circles, they are the states of this random variable. And I can draw the PDF of all the possible states. And in this case, it would be a uniform distribution from uh, 0 to 1. And this is my uh, random variable x0. This is the PDF. The PDF is uniformly distributed from 0 to 1 because that is my, my random variable a. And then I can also look at the other random variable, which is the random variable uh, at, at 0 0.5. This is my second random variable. And in this case, since my a is, is changing uh, from 0 to 1, and then at 0 0.5, I'm looking at the negative side. And therefore, my PDF has a shape like this. It only has a distribution, a distribution on the negative side. So you ask, all right, I have random variable first, I have random variable second. I'm taking the expectation of, of this random variable here, and I'm taking the expectation of that random variable here in the joint sense. Okay, so you have x of 0, and you have x of 0 0.5. And therefore, you're taking the, the product of these two pairs, this pair of random variables. Each of them, they have their own PDF. Okay, now of course this PDF will change over the time. Now if you change this 0 0.5 to something else, and of course it will it will, it will move uh, to the other side. Okay, um, but it, essentially what you're seeing here is a pair of random variables. Each of them they have their own PDF, and therefore this joint expectation makes sense. Now, let's look at another example here. This example is the random phase uh, problem, where we have already shown that the the, the correlation function uh, is given by this one third of cosine two pi t one cosine two pi t two. I want to look at the r x at zero, r x at point uh, five. These are the two time indices t one and t two. Uh, we know the value. Okay, according to the mathematical definition, uh, we can evaluate plugging the numbers, we can get minus one third. Um, but essentially what we are doing, well, essentially what we are doing is, is this diagram. Okay, essentially what we are doing is this diagram. You have this autocorrelation function between this random variable and then the other random variable. And so you are saying that all right, how much correlation will I have for this PDF? Right? This one, you have a PDF here. This is a PDF that is uniformly distributed across from minus pi to pi. And then the other one, you have a PDF distributed from minus pi to pi as well. So you ask, what is the correlation between these two? Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the, the drawing of the autocorrelation function, right? So because we have seen this example um, uh, 3, and then we are also seeing this example 4, I also want to comment a little bit about this 2D function, which is a function in T1 and T2. Uh, in particular, I want to explain uh, the, the beautiful diagram here, and also the beautiful diagram uh, there. I want to explain what they are. Okay, so what is this diagram? This diagram, it is the two-dimensional realization of the random uh, the autocorrelation function. This is the drawing of this Rx T1 and T2. In this diagram, you have two axes. The horizontal axis is T1, the vertical axis is T2. So if you put t1 equals to a certain number, let's say I plug t1, t1 equals to 0, that means I'm looking at this vertical line. And then let's say I, look, I want to look at the correlation between t1 and t2 uh, equals to 0, then I'm looking at here, t2 is also 0, then I'm looking at this point. This point represents what? 
this point says that I here I have all the orange circles because these are my t1 and then if t2 is also 0 then that means all my crosses are also here then the two PDFs I will have will be uh, PDF1 and then PDF2 these are my PDFs and so I calculate the expectation and calculate the joint expectation uh, they will they will overlap uh, exactly and therefore I will have the maximum correspondence because this is uh, the expectation at x at, at 0, x at 0 this is just the expectation of, of x and 0 squared that will be maximized okay so I have a peak at the center now as I move uh, as I say t equals to 0, t2 equals to 0 0.5 what does it mean? well it means then I will move my t2 to 0 0.5 and I go down to here and I calculate the value and then so you have expectation at x at 0 expectation at 0 0.5 uh, you will get a value in this case it's minus one third so as you move uh, along this two dimensional diagram uh, you can see that the meaning of t1 and t2 so let's say I have uh, t1 equals to 0 0.5 and then uh, t2 equals to uh, 1 then I go to 0 0.5 here and then I have uh, t2 equals to 1 so I have 1 here and then 0 0.5 here then I have this number okay and now interestingly you notice that this value and that value they are exactly the same that is because your random process is a periodic function and therefore the correlation function will also become a a periodic function. So you ask what is the visualization of the autocorrelation function? This two-dimensional diagram is the visualization of the autocorrelation function. Then in this example, the random phase example, what is the autocorrelation function? Well, the autocorrelation function is given by this cosine of omega t1 minus t2. This is somewhat different. Uh, this one says that if t1 is taking some value and then t2 is taking some other value uh, I only care about the difference between t1 and t2 for example let's say t1 is 0 t2 is 0 0.5 then what do I have I go to here this is 0 and then my t2 is 0 0.5 I go to here then I'm looking at this point okay this point is exactly the same as if I'm looking at t1 equals to a minus 0 0.5 and t2 equals to 0. Why? Well, you look at this diagram again. Minus 0 0.5 is here, and then 0 is there. Uh, this is the point. This is actually lying along the diagonal of, of this function. Okay. Now, it is a very a special property for this type of random processes where the autocorrelation function can be represented as the difference between the two time indices and this kind of structure we have a name uh, we call this a topless uh, structure it is a very unique structure of the of the uh, autocorrelation function where uh, each row or each column is the shift version of the previous row or the previous column So we have introduced the basic ideas of autocorrelation functions. The autocorrelation function, as is defined, it is the expectation of x at t1 and x at t2. It is just the expectation on a pair of random variables. And therefore, this x, rx at t1 and t2, they are two-dimensional functions. You can draw the diagram and see what they are. And it measures correlation between two random variables, x at t1 and x at t2 it has the same meaning as the expectation of a pair of random variables okay so uh, I hope this lecture has given you some new ideas on uh, autocorrelation functions it is a very new uh, term that is, uh, it, that is new in the random process setting that we haven't learned in the random variable setting this autocorrelation function plays an important role uh, in, down in the row as we study random processes because it tells you how much correlation you will have between one timestamp with the other timestamp. So this is the end of today's lecture. Um, I hope you have learned something. 
if you have any question, uh, please uh, let me know. I will be very happy to help you. Uh, please also try our homework problems. Um, these are extremely basic ideas of random processes. And so I hope that you can um, um, be familiar with these ideas. Thank you very much.